Yeah, good evening. Uh, good to start, sir. Seema here. Okay. okay, okay, fine. Yeah, today we will uh, start with uh, GST accounting. Uh, then what we will do, we will be doing uh, uh, financials in uh, parallelly with accounting standards. Wherever it is required, we will take up the accounting standard and uh, 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 financials schedule three format we will discuss. Okay. So you may be asking me, sir, it is almost seven years. We GST is implemented and still why, what is there great in GST accounting? Okay. See, I will tell you, different companies follow different accounting policies without disturbing the fundamental principles of accounting. Okay. So it is always good to understand how many ways we can do the accounting. Okay. Depending upon their process, depending upon their uh, business mo model. Okay. Accounting entries can be structured by themselves keeping in line with fundamental principles, okay? So whatever I am discussing now, maybe you might be following it already. Well and good. If you are following a similar process, then you can tell me. If you are following different way of accounting, you can tell me, even I will let, uh, learn it, okay? If you feel something is better way than what I am telling, okay? Everything may be right as far as debit and credit is concerned. What you are following is also right. What I am going to tell may also be right. But this is one way of accounting. Okay. So even in business, uh, other entries also, different companies follow different entries. I'm uh, sorry, different uh, accounting entries. So if you... Uh, if you see, in GST is providing us a couple of ledger, that is electronic cash ledger and electronic credit ledger. Okay. So GST department is very proactively giving us what is your transactions in their books of accounts, right? Ledger means that is what we understand. So, department is saying, so-and-so X company is there. X company cash ledger in their books of accounts and credit ledger in their books of accounts. So, they are giving you the ledger on real-time basis. Okay? So, you have access to the books of accounts. This is one aspect. There are various reports also which are getting generated from GST portal. One of that many uh, tax liability and credit ITC comparison. Okay. Uh, this is a ledger and this is a report tax liability and ITC comparison. We will see from system also uh, if you see if you feel it is all no not much then we will restrict to one class today's class if you feel we can do it do the next class also where i will show you uh, entries whatever i am teaching you practically i will show you okay. okay so this is another report which department is providing us and Another another report is say uh, electronic liability register. This is register. This is kind of a report, and this is a ledger. Okay, all these details are available on real time basis from department. If I am an accountant, I will see that my entries are matching with these reports or ledger or uh, register, whatever it is, okay? If I am an auditor, I will check whether the entries what are taken by the business is in line with the entries what are given in the ledgers, okay? 
so with this initial introduction what i i will start with see these are all regular entries which you will be doing it so suppose in coming to purchases purchases we have chances that few purchases may be may have input and few purchases may not have input eligibility so there are chances that particular business has can avail the input credit and there may be certain items where the input credit is not available in case input input liability input is not available then the accounting entries will be like expense account debit here it will be including gst to vendor account if tds is applicable so i am not going to tds aspects and all so i am just closing it at to vendor if it is applicable you will liability of tds otherwise you will not create a liability but what i am trying to impress upon here is expense account debit to uh including gst amount because in this particular purchase input is not available for whatever may be the reason okay so in that case what you have you will be doing it is expense account debit including gst amount so entire amount you are taking it into expense to vendor account you are creating the liability fine though this entry is correct uh i have been always telling you that use technology okay why we have to use technologies for better performance and better reporting and compliance and our job will be easy if you see in gst returns you have to show what is the purchases on which you have not availed the gst if when you are making the entry like this expense account debit to vendor within gst there should be a back end report which has to be generated so that in while filing 3b you are able to capture whatever input which on which sorry whatever purchases on which you have not availed the input right so even in tally see i have not used practically tally much but forget about erp sap and all it is more uh, excuse me there is power cut here uh, let us break for couple of minutes okay sir
Yeah, we will continue without board. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, usually power doesn't go. I don't know why today. So I, if it is not coming in two minutes, that means I don't know. So let us continue, not waste time. Okay. okay. So what I was trying to tell you that whenever there is no input credit, so the usually what the, what is the entry we do is expense account debit including GST to vendor account. Okay. But there should be back-end report where you are able to identify what are the purchases on which input is not availed. This is required for, a, for our monthly or quarterly 3B when we are filing the return. Okay. So this is one aspect of uh, entry where there is no input. Second thing is in the given example, uh, we have we have taken where the taxpayer has got input credit, but few of the purchases he has made on which input credit is not applicable. Okay. But assume if all the purchases, suppose that particular business department, I mean, uh, GST as per GST norms, input is not available completely. In that case, every entry will be expense account debit to vendor account. So how will you identify where there is a GST and where there is no GST, right? So definitely there should be a report which has to be generated backend so that you are able to capture the data for our GST returns okay now coming to i am coming to now where input is available okay i already started where input is available so in case of input available again there is a clause where there are two important aspects which we see whether the payment has been made within 180 days from the date of the invoice and whether the same invoice is being reflected in 2B. Fine. So again, in any of these aspects, we, we are not eligible. Okay. Both the aspects have to be satisfied. It is not any one of the aspects. Both the aspects has to be satisfied. Then only you will be eligible for input credit. So you may ask me why I am teaching all these things. So before I get into the entries, I want to just brief about the input credit. Okay. So this is also one of the important thing where where we we are either we are eligible to take input credit or we have to postpone taking the input credit. Fine. If you if you make all the entries in one account tomorrow when department says please show me out of your total purchases of 10 crores which month you have taken input credit and which month you have not taken input credit is it easy huge transactions entire year so many purchases okay and suppose accountant has changed okay you have newly joined in the organization you do not you don't know where are those excel workings okay all these problems will be there if you structure your accounting entries in such a way that there is no dependency on any excel working you can easily explain to the department which invoice you have taken input on which month okay so we are we are clear that input can be availed only when payment is made within 180 days and also uh, it is reflecting in uh, 2B, correct? So now I am coming into entries. See, in case of no input, 
there should be a backend backend uh, report where it should give, it should give you the uh, it should uh, give you the report where you have purchased goods on which you have not availed the input credit and uh, what is the value of the purchase taxable value and what is the uh, re respective GST amount, maybe I GST, C GST, GST, whatever it is. Okay. From there, that report. Now, even I believe tally also is giving that. You can, uh, if you set your, if you do your tally settings properly, it will take the, it will generate the 3B in tally uh, in such as per your accounting entries. Okay. Now, coming to where input is available and where we have to satisfy all these conditions to avail input credit. So, what I am trying to say, if I am making any purchases, generally what is the entry we are taking? Purchase account debit or expense, whatever it is. Purchase account debit, CGST input credit account debit, SGST input account debit to vendor account, right? This is the first entry usually we are making. And when we are making sales entry, we are saying customer account debit to sales account, to CGST payable account, to SGST payable account, right? This is the entry. And month end, depending upon the people, they will transfer all this input, uh, input credit entries to CGST payable, SGST payable account, and they will uh, file the returns, 3B returns, okay? But this is not the right way what I'm trying to say because in that particular month, you have made purchases of one crore, but you are taking input credit, say only uh, if one crore it is, for example, average rate is 18%, so 18 lakhs, but you are taking input credit of 15 lakhs. Now, nobody will know from that entry this 15 lakhs pertaining to which bills, right? And even for the balance three, uh, for the balance three lakhs, why you have not taken input credit also, right? So it is, if you root the accounting entries in such a way that you are able to easily identify, okay? So if you can uh, transfer this input credit whatever input credit uh, entry, purchase entry is there. First, it will go into input on CGST input on purchases, okay? Instead of just CGST input, or you can put input also, there is no problem. You have to document it, whatever, whatever the scheme of entries you are taking. If you document it, see, nomenclature of the account, nobody can presume. Okay, so if you document your accounting entries, uh, see, this is the scheme of entries for GST in this organization. Then whoever new person also comes and joins the organization, you can give this document. This is the accounting policy document. You have to follow this. Then that will also will take the same accounting entries. Okay, so uh, purchase account debit, CGST input account debit, SGST input account debit, this is the first entry. Now, out of 18 lakhs, in the example, whatever we have taken, if we are taking 15 lakh rupees uh, uh, as input credit, okay, either, sorry, uh, now 15 lakhs, out of 18 lakhs, we are taking 15 lakh input uh, for the current, that particular month, whichever we are discussing. That time, what you have to do, CGST input availed account debit to CGST input account. Here, you should be able to identify invoice wise in this entry. See, like how, uh, say again, I'm telling you, I am not keeping in mind with respect to tally because I don't have much knowledge about tally. But no doubt, even tally also provides this, gives this provision to transfer entry bill wise from one GL to another GL. Okay. The see tally is right. Uh, tally is popular even today, irrespective of any ERP, right? So it is no way lesser than, than any other accounting package. So maybe we do not know how to do it. If we 
uh, ask the expert, they will be able to tell you. So as per uh, whatever out of 18 lakhs, 15 lakhs, you should be able to transfer. Why I am highlighting tally here is most of the clients are using tally only because it is the um, better priced package, accounting package, okay, and more convenient package. And more people knows it uh, easily. So this is the, uh, that is why I'm highlighting with respect to tally, okay. Uh, so this whatever 15 lakhs you are taking input credit. So what what will you the what will be the entry is CGST. I am taking only one uh, account either CGST uh, instead of all three accounts. Same entry will follow for other SGST and IGST also. CGST input availed account debit to CGST input. That means whatever the purchase balance of one crore. Yeah, so uh, one crore 18 lakhs purchase input of 18 lakhs i am transferring bill wise from purchase input account that is cgst input account to cgst input availed account so tomorrow if department comes and ask me how did you wow, how what is the basis of your uh, 15 lakhs out of 18 lakhs so you have to be you have 18 lakh uh, credit available and you have taken only 15 lakhs, which are the bills you have taken input credit, then I need not search for any Excel working. I can just take out the report of that particular GL ledger, that is CGST input available, where it will give me invoice wise details in that entry. Then I can say, sir, this is the, these are the 100 bills on which I have taken the input credit. You need not depend on any person whoever, whoever has done the working whether he is there in the organization, he is not there in the organization is not at all irrelevant because the data is available in the accounting books itself, which you are protecting it for eight years, right? So this is how you can transfer from input, okay, to CGST availed. Okay, you have availed the CGST, but for payment, you have not released the payment. See, 2B is, 2B is there, okay? Payment, how many days you have time? 180 days. Still, you are eligible to, unless you don't make the payment on 181th day, then you have to reverse the input. So, your organization is very good, very prompt payment. They do. There is no worry about the late payments and all. Once you accepted the goods, you have accepted the bill. That means the payment is going to be done as per the payment terms 30 days from the date of invoice, 60 days from the date of invoice maximum nobody gives credit period more than 90 days and as per gst you have 180 days credit period okay so you are very free to take the input credit so you have taken uh, 15 lakhs input from input availed to you are utilizing this 15 lakhs to utilization okay if suppose if for any reason if you are not taking 15 lakhs you are availing 15 lakhs but you do not want to utilize 1 lakh for whatever may be the reason okay then you can take this utilization amount to a different account okay it is always so you may think that how many entries you have to do but by doing this you are making your accounts foolproof okay there is no there is no dependency of an, on anybody everything is available in the system okay so first you have purchased, you are eligible for input credit. Next, you are availing the input credit out of the purchases. Okay, and you left three, uh, three lakh purchases uh, input credit because uh, 2B it is not available or whatever it is the reason. And uh, out of 15 lakhs, say you are taking, in, you are utilizing input credit only to the extent of 14 lakhs, then you can transfer from input availed to input utilized to uh for 14 lakhs then one lakh will be there in your credit ledger balance which you which will because you have availed it in the 3b but you are utilizing only 14 lakhs okay so even utilization what will happen in case of utilization you can transfer the utilization bill wise and then from there you can take it to clearing account also why, why why i am telling you bill wise can be identified only till the utilization period only sorry utilization stage only 
see you were when you are utilizing the credit it cannot be bill wise can it be because your liability say now i told you to avail 15 lakhs input credit but you were you were utilizing only 14 lakhs can if i ask you out of 15 lakhs which bill you have utilized to the extent of 14 lakhs you can't say it is not possible why i will tell you bill wise you can it is not possible for utilization okay whatever you are eligible you have taken input credit but you are utilizing 14 lakhs because your liability is only 14 lakhs you cannot match your liability bill wise with your input utilization that even you have to explain to the department also okay because your input liability will keep it is it is in no way relation to your bill wise purchases right so utilization part you cannot do bill wise it will be always lump sum amount only but till the time of availment you can have bill wise then you you need only 14 lakhs to be utilized this month so you will use 14 lakhs then you will transfer 14 lakhs from input availed to input utilized so that time what will be the entry input away sorry input utilization account debit to input availed account okay this will be a lump sum entry then this 14 lakhs if for whatever may be the reason if you are able to identify whatever the 14 lakhs you are utilizing say for our example you felt that though your liability is more than 14 lakhs still you are using 14 lakhs only because one lakh credit you are doubtful whether you will release the payment to the vendor or not then you can uh, transfer the input utilize input uh, availed entries to utilization also bill wise where there is a in uh, where there is information is available if uh, if you are eligible completely for 15 lakhs still you are utilizing 14 lakhs because your liability is less than uh, uh, less than uh, 15 lakhs then there is no question of uh, uh, invoice wise uh, uh, invoice wise input utilization so whatever input utilization you are taking the amount in utilization then it will be lump sum amount then what you will do from utilization you will transfer this money to a clearing account okay clearing account will be zero always i said all clearing accounts should be made zero that is only a temporary parking of uh, amount for the purpose of closing that's all okay so what you will do after taking to utilization then you will say uh, G, uh, gst cgst clearing account debit to cgst utilization account and what you will do your liability also for that month in our example it is 14 lakhs cgst payable account debit t to cgst clearing account okay this is how you can make the entry then you will have bill wise details till the point of utilization wherever it is possible even for utilization also you have breakup of entries where where it is not possible where you are using uh, as a lump sum amount it will be a single entry and you will mention in narration that so and so reason there is no bill wise tag for this particular utilization if you are able to do for utilization also bill wise it is well and good though the number of entries are increasing okay this is monthly once only you will do right but it is very useful from organization point of view it will create a record in your accounting system itself that all the data backup Any doubts you have? No, sir. Recording in progress. See, now power has come.
Hello, sir. Sir, uh, please unmute it, sir. Sorry. Okay, purchases account debit, GST input account debit to vendor account. Next entry will be what I was trying to tell you to take this GST input to GST input availed. This is what you will be taking as input in 3B. Input availed, they will go in table that A, B, C on others. So this is the value you will take it. You are availing the credit to GST input account. So this amount, say in whatever example I have taken, this is 18 lakhs, but I am availing only 15 lakhs. Okay. Out of 15 lakhs, I am I am utilizing only 14 lakhs. So again, after this next entry will be GST input utilization account debit to GST input availed account 14 lakhs, 14 lakhs. This is availed account. Okay. This is 14 lakhs. So th this one lakh whatever balance is you are getting here, the same one lakh will show in your credit ledger also because you have availed 15 lakhs and utilized 14 lakhs. So whenever you see the input availed account balance, should match with your electronic credit ledger balance. Okay. By doing this, it will keep, you can, I mean, uh, reconcile your ledger with your uh, GST department ledger. See, final account should always get reconciled with the third party. If it is debtors, you get balance confirmation. If it is creditors, you get the balance confirmation. And department is upfront providing you all the ledgers. So you should try to match this with your entries. Okay. Then after utilization, okay, there is no balance in utilization, right? You have used it for your sales. So when you are doing sales, sales, sorry. Customer. Account debit to sales account to GST payable account. So, though it is one additional entry, I prefer that GST you take it to clearing account. GST clearing account debit to GST utilization account and you bring this GST payable also GST payable account debit to GST clearing account then this clearing account will become zero whatever liability and whatever you are utilizing you are uh, taking that also to the clearing account then it will become zero in the same way in next class I will tell you suppose if it is a cash ledger, then I will show you the example. Okay. I will see that in next class to complete it. Otherwise it may go for another class. It is very useful. I will show you a live example of one of the, I have just created the entries in tally. Okay. I have not created bill wise uh, because it is just for explanation purpose. Okay. So you, how it will be useful, you will know. And I told you, this is not any, any standard is not pre prescribing to make all these entries. This, we are, we are doing this entry at any stage. See, here you have bill-wise details, whatever, whatever 18 lakhs input you are taking. You have bill-wise details. Anytime you can do, because you are creating the entry bill-wise only here. Whenever you are making the purchase, you are making the entry and this money is getting accumulated. Fine. Rather, rather just shifting this money to liability, usually people does that, this input, huh, 14 lakhs liability, transfer from input to payable account. It is not the right way. Just add 2-3 entries. This is, see, this you are doing monthly, 
maximum five six entries. That is monthly. Okay, so it is worth doing it. Okay, so what I am trying to say, just transfer bill wise details from input to input avail, and if possible, even from input avail to utilization, and then you transfer to clearing account so that this liability is also bill wise. It is getting through clearing account and it is nullified. Okay, just think of it. If you feel any no any better way of accounting, you can tell me. Okay, shall we wind up today's class? Yes, sir. What about your uh, Diwali holidays? Fourteenth, uh, sir. Thirteenth and fourteenth. Ah, huh. fourteen okay. only fourteen. Only fourteen. Okay, fourteen is Tuesday, right? Yes, sir. Okay, then I think it will not disturb our class on Monday and uh, Wednesday. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. If any change, uh, let uh, your HR tell me. Then we can make the changes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.